All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Madison Savlo, and I am Chief of Staff at Carbon Upcycling Technologies. Carbon Upcycling is a carbon utilization technology company based in Calgary. Um, and we take the waste of today to build a better tomorrow. So if we took the weight of every person on Earth and multiplied that cumulative, cumulative weight by 100 times, that is the amount of CO2 being released into the atmosphere every year. 40% of this comes from buildings, and we're going to see the built environment double in size by 2060. So we have a large problem at hand. Um, these are just some of the stats behind what's contributing to climate change. Obviously a large problem that all of us know, know about and are well versed in. And essentially what our company does is we capture CO2 and we sequester it into inorganic solid powders. So some of the powders that we use are industrial wastes like fly ash, bottom ash, steel slag, pet coke. I probably recognize a few of those as um, just the byproducts of industrial processes that are widely, um, widely used throughout Alberta um, and the rest of the world. Um, but we also use natural pozzolans as well. So things like graphite, talc, yellowstone, um, different types of clay powders. So Really, our, our feedstocks are quite broad, and that also allows our end products to be quite broad and have a lot of different applications. This picture you see here in the middle is one of our reactors. This is our, our largest unit to date. And really how this technology works is each particle of the powder acts like a sponge. It soaks up the CO2 and holds it in a stable form. Um, and then it can be used as an additive or uh, just an end material in, in many different industries. Right now, we're a top 10 finalist in the NRG COSIA Carbon X Prize. So you may recognize X Prize. Um, they've had a lot of media attention the past couple of weeks here as Elon Musk has put together about $100 million for the next carbon prize. Um, but before that, we were in the $20 million prize. So this one was about carbon utilization rather than you know, Elon Musk's carbon capture. Um, and we've been in it for about five years now. So we've just wrapped that up in December and we're, we're awaiting the results, but our unit, uh, you can see with the all these reactors at the bottom, are located in a bay at this facility. This is the Shepherd Energy Center. It's southeast of Calgary, um, and it's a natural gas plant. So we take the CO2 from the natural gas plant, and we're sequestering it into the powders that we process through these reactors you can see here. Um, this little alpha reactor, it was about the size of a cookie jar. Um, that's something that we used ages ago, it was one of our very first reactors. Um, and since then we've scaled our technology over 10 million times. So the ADA reactor, it processes 20 tons of material in a batch and each batch is about five hours with that machine. Um, with some of the other reactors though, we do run them for different lengths of time, even up for up to a couple of weeks, uh, depending on how processed we want the material to be. So it's a very versatile technology and it's been really exciting to see our demonstration facility come together. Um, this whole site um, with all of the carbon utilization companies in total, plus the capture unit supplied by InnoTech Alberta is called the Alberta Carbon Conversion Technology Center. Um, there's very few of these centers around the world. One of the other ones is in Wyoming. Um, that was the other site for the X Prize. And there's, there's a couple others to run by the government, but really, really novel technologies being demonstrated here. Um, and we're lucky to have it just southeast of Calgary. Now you may be wondering what type of, of products we actually put these powders into and how useful powders can actually be, but the technology use case is, is very broad. So our very first uh, product line that we developed was an anti-corrosion coating. Um, this was sold first in 2017. We were only two and a half years old and that allowed us to become the youngest carbon utilization technology in the world to earn revenue. Um, typically it takes about 12 years to become commercial. So we were quite proud of that moment. Um, but really how this works is we coat grease interceptors at fast food restaurants. Um, Right now we're trying to work into water and wastewater infrastructure and, and bigger infrastructure as well, um, but it is a very, very easily applied technology. Our concrete additive is our biggest demonstration. 
that large reactor that I was showing that process only concrete additive. Um, and really how this one works is it reduces the amount of cement used in a concrete mix by up to about 20%. And this also increases the compressive strength of concrete by 40%. Um, this is something that we really want to see widespread. We want to see this in concrete manufacturers sites around the world. Um, in 2018, we graduated from the Lafarge Wholesome Accelerator in France. And since then, we've had quite a number of commercial partners here in Alberta, um, including Burnco, which is um, one of the bigger manufacturers in the area. Um, so that's been quite exciting to, to see that one come together. Um, and our last additive is a polymer additive. So this one is really, really versatile in the sense that it can go into many different polymer resins and um, very versatile in the sense that it can also use many different feedstocks. So things like graphite powder, talc, crushed glass, um, many other different additives as well. And, and last year we were part of the Fondation Repsol you may recognize Repsol as the Spanish oil and gas giant, um, but they also have a subsidiary called Dinosol, um, who deals mostly with plastics. We were able to do some testing with them. Now, this is how the, the technology works in the concrete industry. So this itself is a very standard concrete supply chain. Um, very simple. Our machine would just tack onto the back end as a plug and play technology, reducing the cement use and keeping the supply chain intact. The concrete industry is super, super conservative. Um, really, the, the concrete mix hasn't changed since the Colosseum was built. Um, and so that's been really, really uh, interesting to see a lot of these bigger players coming together and asking to, to change how much um, CO2 emission they're releasing um, by changing a mix that's really been standardized for years. So this is something that's really important to, to note is that a lot of technologies that are entering these conservative spaces have to bridge this gap between conservative in industry and big innovation. So. This is something that we've done to, to assure that um, and making sure that we have a modular unit. It's, um, it's very easy to operate, um, but the technology behind it is very solid. So some of the, uh, the features of this um, are having a low energy carbon utilization process. Um, we don't actually break the CO2 molecule when we're doing our carbon utilization tech, um, which is really important. It allows us to conserve energy. It makes the process a lot simpler. Um, and that's just something that is, is really important to, to note in this industry as well, is that you want to make sure you're not releasing more energy to actually do your process than what you're sequestering. So um, yeah, this is, this is our technology. We're also working to get onto renewable grids. Um, and at the moment, we are batch process. So this allows us to tailor our technology to non-peak electricity hours. Now, some of the, the global impact that we can have is mostly around the greenhouse gas reduction potential of each of our product lines. Um, some of these industries you may be more familiar with than others. Um, the anti-corrosion coating definitely wasn't something I ever thought I would be into, um, but it's a really interesting market. And um, really what this one is saying is that we're, we're trying to extend the lifespan of infrastructure and not replace it. So it's really that opportunity cost of having, um, having to not replace your infrastructure quite so often or repair it, um, that helps you reduce the greenhouse gas emission in that you're not expending more material to fix things. Um, the concrete additive really is very simply the, the largest impact we can have because concrete is the second most used substance on earth other than water. Um, if we were to hit about a 75% market share of the fly ash industry, which is one of the main feedstocks we use, we would see about one gigaton of CO2 reduction per year. So that's pretty, pretty large. Um, for an individual concrete manufacturer, that's about a 25% reduction in CO2. And then for our polymer additive, um, because we're replacing synthetic uh, additives and synthetic nucleators, that allows us to reduce the greenhouse gas potential of these products by about 90%. Um, they don't go into quite uh, as large a projects as what the concrete would. So really we're only seeing about 3.7 um, megatons there. 
Now, some more interesting uh, industries that we're getting into now, um, you know, other than just selling our products B2B and, and seeing these powders go out the door, we've actually started a consumer product line. So this is something that, that I lead and has been really uh, exciting to see come together. Uh, we want to show to, to the world and to consumers that they can be a part of carbon tech. So if this is something that interests you, I highly recommend checking it out. And there's a lot of other companies in this space that are doing something similar. Um, to engage with the general public, we have to have products that people can touch and feel and, and um, understand in a way that allows them to also engage um, directly with the CCUS industry and, and technologies. So um, some of the products, I have pens there on the screen, but we've made yoga mats, we've made planters. Uh, we've made watches with a concrete base, which has the CO2 embedded in it. Um, we're also working on a, a large textile project and also into cosmetics. So really, really super broad, um, but we're really excited to see this take off. So we're calling this new brand Expedition Air, and you can look it up um, for on all the social medias, and we have a new site launching on, on March 2nd. So you'll be able to access all these products and purchase them for yourselves. Um, other than that, um, we are looking to license out the technology. So this is a main portion of our model. Um, we want to see this technology used very, very broadly across the world and in different regions and in different industries. So we want to license out our reactors and we don't necessarily want to build all of these ourselves every time. So looking for partners in which we can do that with is really key to the success of this technology and to our company. So yeah, that's, um, that's kind of where we're at right now. And we're doing always new research on materials. I think it's, it's really interesting working at this company and, and being able to engage with that and be part of the R&D portion. Um, I'm, I myself don't have a, a technology background, but um, I've been in there with the reactors and explaining nanotech every day. So it's really exciting to see the R&D projects come together. Um, I remember even with the cosmetics, I had clay that I used for face masks at home and I realized it's something that we could definitely process. So I brought that to work and we processed it in one of the smaller reactors. So really anything is possible. And I think that's kind of a, a cool aspect to the startup world as well as to, to carbon tech. So to date, I'll just quickly do an overview of some of the, the partners that we've had. Um, all of our anti-corrosion coatings are in fast food restaurants. So that's why you, you see some recognizable labels there in the users of our, our products. Um, but we also have some really big partners on the technology side in the um, in universities and in research bodies. So um, that's been pretty great to see all of that support come together. Um, in terms of awards, uh, as I mentioned, we're the finalists in the um, in the X Prize. So that's uh, really exciting and stay tuned for the results of that. Hopefully, hopefully you'll see our names as a winner, but we won't find out until around April. Um, we've also won a Solar Impulse label, which is a really exciting prize as well. It's only given to 1,000 companies worldwide for their clean tech solution. And um, oh, there's tons of amazing companies that have been awarded this. It's a really, really um, interesting prize to look at if you're, if you're interested. Um, those are probably the, the main ones at the moment. Um, we are starting up operations in New York State because we won the 76 West competition. So we will be going global. Um, pretty exciting step for our company. And this is our team. Um, we have the, the founders, uh, Greg and Apoorv, who started this in 2014. And with, you know, all the technology growth that we've seen, we've also had a team grow as well. So um, these are just the, the main people that we work with in the office and in the shop, but we have contractors, consultants, um, and a wider ecosystem that supports us through all of this and are, are equally as much of our team as, as we uh, all the core members are. So yeah, pretty exciting to be a part of this, this group. Yeah, so if you're interested, I know it says uh, field trial validation and licensing of technology, um, but this is just a kind of a more standardized deck, I guess um, somebody had changed it while I was off of it. So if you're interested in learning more, please don't hesitate to, to reach out, um, send me an email and or find me on LinkedIn. Uh, we always love having conversations about what we do and, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Hi, Madison. So our first question is, how much energy input or power does the equipment need to operate? 
It, um, it depends on which reactor. Some of the larger ones are pretty low. It's about 120 kilowatt hours per ton of material processed. Um, that being said, we are on the Alberta grid. So at this moment, we are not carbon negative. We do have a positive impact. Um, that wasn't really by our choosing. It'd be ideal if we could be on a renewable grid, but the XPRIZE was held in Alberta. So um, that's something that we'll be adjusting shortly. And then at that point, our products will be carbon negative. Okay, awesome. So the next question is, do you have any info on the net additional energy requirements for the concrete production, including for the sequestration and modified manufacturing process? How do net costs compare to traditional concrete? Yeah, a uh, really good question. I mean, we we actually don't um, we don't manufacture concrete. We manufacture a concrete additive. So that's really the only portion that we're able to to talk to. Um, the concrete industry itself is, is terrible for carbon emissions. And the main portion of that comes from cement use. So cement is the most carbon intensive portion or ingredient you could say in the concrete mix. Um, it's also the most expensive. So when we're able to um, substitute out about 20% of concrete or sorry, 20% of cement in a concrete mix using our additive that reduces the carbon footprint of the overall concrete mixture by about 25%. Um, I can't speak exactly to the, the emissions associated with all of concrete. I know with cement, it's about uh, a ton per ton of product. So one ton of CO2 emissions emitted for every ton of, of cement uh, produced. Okay, awesome. And lastly, can you elaborate more about what fly ash is? Yeah, for sure. So fly ash is a byproduct of coal incineration plants. And this is a, a really interesting question because um, a lot of times when we're talking about fly ash or the coal industry, um, people wonder if we're supporting it by using a byproduct. And um, we actually are able to take it from landfills. So when you're putting fly ash into a concrete mix, you have to hit a uh, a very specified level or grade of fly ash used. Um, a lot of fly ash doesn't hit that. There's actually 37 gigatons of fly ash sitting in landfills in only the top 10 fly ash producing countries in the world. So if we're able to use all of that and, and use that fly ash that's sitting in landfills dating back to even the 1910s, um, that's really our, our main goal. Okay, we have one more question. It says, how does the technology compare to existing technology on a life cycle scale? Yeah, so we do a lot of comparisons between, you know, ourselves and other technologies, as well as um, just the conventional materials that are being used. Um, you know, as I mentioned, the, the concrete mix, excel, mix itself hasn't really changed since the Coliseum was built. So most of the time in the concrete industry, we're comparing ourselves against the conventional product. And in that case, it's definitely a, a carbon reduction. All of the products that we introduce are going to be better than the conventional um, materials used. Um, all of the other innovations in the sector are also kind of at the same stage we are. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting to see how we can all work together. Our technology is made so that it works in collaboration with other technologies and we can apply uh, many different innovations and technologies to these different sectors to have a, a larger cumulative impact. Awesome. Uh, I think that's the end of our questions, Madison. Thank you for your time and in introducing us to this technology. Great, thanks so much for having me.